Hey there, Internet! I'm Funky Monkey with the last untold tale from the Marvelous Legends. Now, I chose which movies to include for the storyline in the Road to the Endgame, and I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. But I've also enjoyed revisiting these untold tales, and today we're going in a little bit of a circle as we discover the person that's indirectly responsible for the entire Avenger initiative. Down the street with your red lips and funky beat. Released in 2019, Captain Marvel is an altogether different type of origin story. A Kree enforcer is working to eliminate the threat of the Skrull, but her latest mission will change her life. So let's go back to the 90s and the emerging days of the internet, and prepare to get super radical with our final marvellous legend, Captain Marvel. Serving the Kree, a woman fate has made incredibly powerful. Her name, Veers. And her enemies, the Skrull. Trixie little blighters, able to change their shape down to the DNA. Perfect for infiltration. The Skrull capture our heroine, and rifle through memories she can't even access. But Veers is a tough nut to crack, and fights her way out of captivity following the scroll to the world designated C-53, more commonly known by its colloquial name, Earth. It's 1995, and Nick Fury and his new partner are about to enter into the craziest adventure of the whole damn decade. They pursue Veers, as she pursues a scroll. But in a crowded train, it's easy to lose someone. So instead, our heroes go looking for a Dr. Lawson. The scroll memory machine showed Veer's images of a life that she had forgotten, and memories of a Dr. Wendy Lawson. Also, Nick Fury has earned enough trust and has high enough clearance to get our heroine into the Pegasus Project. But Fury called him back up which backfires on him spectacularly. It's nice to finally see Nick Fury demonstrating his legendary skills here, but once again, we're having to skip it because YouTube. Oh, for a credible competitor. And so our heroes escape Project Pegasus and head for Maria Rambo in Louisiana. Last survivor of the Pegasus Project and best friend of Veers' true identity, US Air Force pilot, Carol Danvers. It's here that Carol rediscovers who she was, and what Dr. Wendy Lawson was creating. Enter Skrull Commander Talos with the next piece of the puzzle. Dr. Wendy Lawson, alias Cree Renegade Marvell, who sought to create a new form of engine. Sadly, she was all too soon discovered. Danvers shot the engine to keep it from Cree hands, and was given her powers in the resulting blast, which also wiped her memory. And after a little cosmetic upgrade, Hello. the stage is set for our finale. Carol takes a leap of faith to lead the Skrull to Marvel's orbital lab, and a whole community of Skrull refugees. Marvel took pity on the refugee Skrull after learning that the Kree had destroyed the Skrull homeworld. Thus, her lightspeed engine would have catapulted a handful of remaining Skrull far beyond the reach of the Kree Empire. But the Kree won't just give up their greatest weapon. The Kree, Supreme Intelligence, had fitted Veers with a power dampener, keeping her from discovering her true power. In a glorious scene of defiance, our heroine rips it out, and discovers the true extent of her power. Which is bad news for the Kree. Cue a thrilling battle with a terribly cliched soundtrack. But Kree Commander Yonrog won't be denied. Enter Carol to put a stop to that nonsense. And so our hero finally gets the chance to take it to her former commander in a bruising bruise. <laughs> Wasn't quite prepared for that. Well, anyway, denouement! 
And so our movie ends with Carol Danvers promising the Skrull refugees a new home, and Agent Nick Fury coming up with a surprisingly good idea. And that idea became the Avengers. And you know the rest. And if you don't, all the links that you need are provided below. Anyway, that was Captain Marvel. And actually, I think that this is a tale worth telling. Full disclosure, I've always loved incredibly powerful heroes. Overpowered is my jam, my dream, my fantasy. And just because this OP hero is a heroine, doesn't make a lick of difference to me. And yes, if they'd made a Superman movie where he's getting over kryptonite poisoning or had a kryptonite microbomb implanted in his skull and only removed it at the climax of the movie or something, maybe I'd sing that movie's praises too. But this is the movie we've got, and it's far from a bad one. But let's get to the performances. And yes, Brie Larson doesn't emote that much, at first, but as the movie goes on, I did start to see flashes of emotion in Carol Danvers, as she recovered her memories, her human life, her humanity. And of course, Samuel L. Jackson returns as a younger Nick Fury, a good ten years or so before the craziness of even the first Iron Man movie, and still every inch Samuel L. Jackson, which is of course no bad thing. And then, there's the villains. Jude Law is almost entirely wasted as yon -Rog, who doesn't emote that much either to my eyes, while Lashana Lynch's Maria Rambo is at least believable. The standout performance though is Ben Mendelsohn, as Skrull Commander Talos, who shows a much softer side to the Skrull race, softer at least than we saw in the comics. And the flow of this movie is superbly smooth, barely cutting away from our heroine and her mission, first to destroy the Skrulls, for the good of the Kree, and then to stop the Kree from destroying the last of the Skrulls. So is it a perfect movie? No. There are some directorial decisions that I have to take issue with, such as a climactic battle set to no doubt's just a girl, which is either fatal irony poisoning, or far too on the nose to be serious. And I distinctly remember when watching this in the cinema, remarking that the final insult to Yon Rog was weak. We were set up for a big final battle to show that our heroine was a brawler and... she owed him into the rocks. But then that's a stylistic choice. That this isn't Captain America, or Iron Man, or Peter Quill being half celestial, it's the story of a damn good pilot who got superpowers, ended up on the wrong side of a war, and came to Earth to discover who she really was, and what she really needed. And I can appreciate that, even if Brie Larson played a character that kicks Scott Pilgrim's heart in the bum. Nah, just kidding, just kidding. I'm not really all that bothered about Scott Pilgrim. Anyway, that concludes the untold tales of the Infinity Saga. A bold experiment in connected storytelling via the cinematic medium. And now, all that remains to say is to thank you for watching and to deliver my parting words. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, great entertainment, and peace in yourself. A hearty excelsior and so long, folks! <laughs>